We have quite the development, ladies and gentlemen. You guys know me by this point, right? You don't know me? Hi, my name is Agent Zero. Subscribe to the channel, put on post notifications. Also, updating the store real soon. So get your Agent Range tees. All the tees are gonna be gone real soon. Uh, link in the description. Why do I feel like Jake Paul every time I talk about merch? I've been asking for a skills gap on 2K for as long as I can remember. And in previous years, like 2K17, they came out with articles talking about some skills matter. And then you play the game and it's a 6-2 speed boost and sharpshooters ducking and dodging Hall of Fame brick wall screens. The shooting was so, so super easy in that game. Across the board, it just, it was an easy game to pick up. Boom, in one week, I was the best player. I was a top tier, top 1% player. It really didn't take much to be good at that game. 2K18 was a lot of the same, right? Blow buys and snatch backs. You really didn't have to put in much effort to get by somebody. Just use two cheesy moves and you can do it every single time. 2K19 comes out and all that is gone. And there's a lot of people being exposed, right? That's what happens with a skills gap, ladies and gentlemen. Believe it or not, when you add a skills gap to a game, the frauds that got away in the previous systems because it was so easy, get exposed. And then the people that were bad in the previous system, I don't even know how they fare, because at that point, like, life is a spectrum, right? There's the top players, then there's the worst players, and somewhere, me and you are in the middle. But there's been a new development. Flawless put out this tweet, and it was of people ducking and dodging. They didn't want to play him because he was a high overall and a high rep on the park. Ernie responded to that tweet saying, people that complain about this are so dumb. It's not our fault that 2K doesn't have a ranked park. The closest thing is stage, so go play that. I don't want to play elite threes that have 1,500 games and stay at home all day and play the game. Stop crying about it. And they're both kind of right. Imagine being a very good player, and because your overall is shown to everybody, they could easily search up your record. They're not gonna wanna play you. They know they're gonna lose. Maybe they care about their record or maybe they just don't wanna be embarrassed or maybe they just don't wanna break a controller trying. And then meanwhile, you have the try hard players can't find any games because everybody is too scared to play them. How do you win? So a lot of what I've been hearing is like, maybe you can separate the parks and make it like skills-based matchmaking so you can divide the good people and the bad people. But can't I just have a bad friend and join through him and then annihilate, do drop steps, reverse windmills, like destroy everybody in that easy ass park. So if you play a game like Call of Duty or Rainbow Six, that's what some people do, is to get gameplays, they go on Smurf accounts and just run through the easy ranks. So what are you gonna do, completely segregate them? If you have a good win percentage, you can't play with the bad ones, but what if I have a friend who has a good win percentage and I have a bad one? Also, who decided win percentage was the best determinant of how good you are? So you can go pretty damn deep into the rabbit hole trying to figure out a solution until you come to the conclusion there's no real perfect one. I've heard people say like, yo, why don't we just hide the records or hide people's overalls? Because there was previous 2Ks where they just didn't actively show it. You could probably search and find it out if you click square and then run through your phone and you can do the scouting if you want to. But it wasn't actively showing all the time and so it wasn't as big of a factor. It's like people that are obsessed about their kill death ratio on shooting games, right? If you're playing Call of Duty and they start to parade around your kill death ratio, you're gonna be like, yo, I have to get my kill death ratio up because everybody sees it. And so to prove that you're good at the game to your friends or to the other team or maybe even to yourself, you try and get your kill death ratio up. And part of that sometimes means doing dumb shit like not playing the objective because you have one objective and that's to prove you're good and not really win games. I've played games of Rainbow Six where a guy refused to go to the objective because he's like, I would have died anyway. They had four people. It was 1v4. I was like, you, you're a whole bitch. Not half a bitch and then you, you're this half. No, no, no. Entire fucking full bitch. You are an entire one, my guy. So maybe that'll work. Maybe if you hide the records and hide the overalls, but that might hurt the incentive to someone wanting to grind, right? Part of grinding, showing like a streak on the park or having a 95 overall one month into the game's launch is flexing to say like, yo, this is what I accomplished. I'm fantastic at the game. For example, in Uncharted and Rainbow Six, you can't see the rank of your team or the other team until after the game. Maybe they did it purposefully because they didn't want people dashboarding or quitting in ranked matches to avoid good competition to keep their stats up. They make it a point in both of those games to hide that stuff because if you start to show it to everybody before and after the games, yes, you're kind of flexing your muscles. Yo, I'm a diamond player in this game. I'm a diamond player in that game. That's cool and all. But then people aren't gonna wanna play against you. If I hop into a lobby in Rainbow Six and it's full diamond squad, I'm leaving. I don't even want to partake in that massacre. Can you can you imagine these PC tryhards get a hold of me in a diamond lobby? Yo, it's over. And that's how some of these people probably feel on 2K. If I see a 95 overall and I play the game, like I play the game casually, right? I never really got serious into the game. I'm just trying to kick it with my guys. 
Why would I play that guy? There is no reason for me to play him. Now, sure, 2K can hide the overalls and the records and the streaks, and I might get tricked into playing him. Maybe he's not as good as I thought. But then you can get frustrated playing any game to the point where you just begin scouting everybody. Because whether you want to believe it or not, 2K is an inherently unique game. There's no real thing in the gaming industry like there is the neighborhood in 2K19. But I think I have a solution, one that works for most people. So we just experienced the Ruffles event for the first time yesterday. And I only played a couple games of it because I woke up late and I wanted to get some gameplay. But it, it looked pretty fun. Now I heard, I heard it was super laggy though. We gotta fix that 2K. But that's not the point. The point is, I feel like 2K already has everything they need to solve and fix this issue. Tryhards are having a tough time getting games and bad players most definitely aren't trying to play the tryhards. So what do you do? Well, you guys really, you know the answer because if you play any other video game, they all implement it, of course in different ways depending on the game, but they all have a similar system. Now, you heard me say it on the channel, I'm not no genius or some creative individual who thought of some fantastic idea, I just play other games, so I know what they do and what works. The answer is ranked, unranked. The playground, keep it the same, the way it is right now, unranked, right? You can kick it with your guys, relax, play, join this court, get destroyed, join that court, win a couple games, whatever the case. And exactly how they had the Ruffles event this year, you can make that the ranked part. And that's matchmaking. So you can relax with you guys on unranked playground, do whatever the f you want. But you can hop in ranked and then play people at your skill level if you want. See, there is a common misconception with people that don't play other types of games that when I'm talking about ranked, unranked, that you have to be a fantastic, overpowered, try hard ass player, a comp player to play ranked. In reality, ranked makes most sense for the bad players. Let's say that I'm a 73 overall player, I don't really play that much and I'm trying to grind. I hop into ranked and I get five placement matches. And in those five placement matches, let's say I'm a bad player, so I do horrible, and they give me copper. Because the ranking system usually goes copper, bronze, silver, gold, platinum, and diamond, for example. And then at that point, I'm only playing copper players. I might feel more comfortable as a super casual new player playing ranked because I'm gonna play against people equally as garbage as me. Now, I also might get frustrated because imagine your point guard is a copper player, you're gonna wanna shoot yourself. What if you have basketball IQ, but you're just new to the game, right? So that's why you have options between the two. It also makes sense for the tryhard players. But you can have ranked and unranked and it, it really won't matter unless you have a real ranking system for the ranked playlist. 2K has a very preliminary version of that. Amateur one, amateur two, amateur three, pro one, two, three, Elite one, two, three. But you never know how close you are to the next one, and I'm pretty sure it's impossible to go down. It's not a ranking system if you can only go up. It literally does not make any sense. If I lose enough games on Tekken, I'm going down a rank. And then I have to win even more games to go back up to where I was. Same goes with Rainbow Six, same goes with Uncharted, same goes when I used to play SOCOM. When I used to play SOCOM, I'm being super serious. If I lost three games, I was going down a rank. I had to win around 15 to 20 games to go back up. So I really had no room for error. But that also meant that anytime somebody in a lobby saw my rank, they knew I was a baller. And that you really don't wanna mess with me. Now in most ranking systems, the biggest determinant factor by far is wins or losses. To the point where when I play Uncharted or Rainbow Six, you can have the greatest game of your life, my guy. You could have dropped 17 kills in six rounds of Rainbow Six, and if you lost the game, you were going down in rank. That's just the way it is, you have to win. So that often means, that this also goes for games like Overwatch, etc. that sometimes you can get carried to good ranks if you're playing with good players. That's not the point, the point isn't how you have a fair ranking system, that's for 2K to figure out. But you can divide people in that way without actually segregating them. You give people options. So now, the casual players have an option to play with other casual players or just shoot their shot and relax in unranked. On top of that, if you do my proposed solution, there's no real significance to your unranked playground record anymore. And so people will be, people will stop being so afraid of playing these really good players or playing with really bad players on their team because they're worried what it's gonna mean for their record. Because the reality of the situation is if you have a bad record, it's gonna be tough to convince somebody to play with you. Now, honestly, I don't have to deal with that issue because I have the YouTube logo on my head and my face scan is super realistic and people hear my voice and they know my username. And so I'll be playing, I can literally walk in any park and I can play with the best player. 99% of the time they'll be like, all right. Even if they have a squad, they will literally leave their squad to play with me. And then I'm sitting awkwardly in the call, like I'm just not ruining a friendship or something like that. But obviously not everybody has it like that. So if you walk in, you have nobody to play with, but you're playing unranked. 
You don't really care if you lose. I could lose a million unranked games in a row on any game and I literally would not care. It's unranked. It is literally warm up for ranked for me. Now, keep in mind again, 2K is a unique game, so you don't know how it's gonna play out. Listen, that's all I'm saying, ladies and gentlemen. I've been saying it for a while, and Ruffles, they literally have everything they need. Ruffles, you walk in there, you stand there with your team, all four of you guys look up like this, and then you match make, and you play a game. And your Ruffles record is separate from your real record. So if you play 15 Ruffles games and you win five of them, you were five and 10. So I was playing a couple games. I just thought to myself, like, can you imagine if instead of calling this thing Ruffles and having this whole event, they made it 3v3 and they just called it Ranked Park. And they had leaderboards and and stats that they measured up so you can see how good you are compared to the next guy. And they had weekly or monthly events and tournaments. Can you imagine? Can just That's just the fucking start. Can you imagine how far they can take it? And then it also gives them an opportunity to do private matchmaking where you can walk into that Ruffles style arena and then send a key out to somebody else or invite them to your party, whatever the case is, and matchmake privately. So you won't have to worry about, well, what I have to worry about is people taking the squad spot and how do you get a park? All the parks are full. We have to beat this team, then we'll play you guys next. We don't have to worry about none of that. I think it's not necessarily a perfect solution, but it's as good as you can possibly get. Because no matter what you change about the game, whether you hide the records or you hide the streaks or you hide overalls, whether you want to segregate the different parks so bad players play, and but you don't have ranked on them, you just want to segregate for the sake of, every, someone's going to be mad about all the possible solutions. There's going to be some sort of anger, some sort of resentment, because people like the playground, believe it or not. It's the most played game mode. Anytime you want to make a change to it, you're risking taking away what people loved about it. It's what Fortnite did to me. I loved a lot of things about the game, and the more they changed it and changed it for the sake of, they started to take away the shit I liked about the game. And of course they give you new reasons with all those changes, but I really miss double pumping guys in the fucking head and not having to worry about an insane delay or now you can't one shot with the double pump anymore. And now I'm not playing Fortnite no more. I think this solution is a lot better than what we're seeing right now. And it's people like Flawless putting out tweets saying, stop being a play better people and get better bump. Or Swante saying, ha 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 ha, Ha, huh? fear is an illusion, wake up, it's not real, nothing bad will happen. But like, if you just deplore a little bit of empathy, I would be ra I would be breaking controllers if I had to play top eSport try hard ass no life players in any video game where I was a casual player. So I get that it's easy for you to not see the other side and to only ever want and ask about the shit that helps you out in your play style. But life is all about balance. A skill gap is a good thing, ladies and gentlemen. It gives you something to work towards, but at the same time, you have to put people in an environment where they're actually able to work towards it. And getting 22 old on the twos by a bunch of try-hard ass pure shot creators ducking and dodging brick wall screens, that shit is not fun and it definitely isn't helping you improve. Also, 2K, for the sake of improvement, just allow us to change our animations in the my core. Who took that away? Like, that's the one place we're supposed to practice. I gotta leave the my core, change my animation, come back in like this, just to, just to practice. You know how long that takes? That's where I stand, yo. Let me know what you guys think about my proposed solution. I'm not gonna say I thought of it on my own. Literally just stole it from all the video games I've played growing up. <laughs> if you guys enjoyed the video, drop a like. Click on one of these two videos. I, I know you missed one of them. And if you don't click on it, you're just lying to me. So don't do that. I'm gonna catch you guys in the next one. I'm out. Peace.